we can get started. Thanks so much to everyone for joining. You're hopefully at the right place. If you're looking for the Power of Flows uh, webinar by Dscope, specifically about dynamic identity federation. Um, so let's get into it. So first, a little bit about me. I'm Alan, I'm part of the engineering he team here at Dscope. Uh, we're based in the Bay Area of California, a little bit south of the city. Um, in my free time, I will rock climb, support Chelsea. Uh, I've been reading, I guess, last webinar, updated everyone on the biography I was reading about uh, cancer. And now that one has been too verbose. So I'm taking a break for a uh, fiction book called The Dispossessed. Um, so that's been interesting. Uh, that's me. So today, what we're going to talk about is a little bit of the basics of Dscope, just to, to get a foundation. And then we'll get into what is uh, federation or dynamic identity federation. And then we'll talk about kind of the client applications, uh, the identity providers and the use cases that arise when you're able to dynamically connect the two. And after that, we'll go into a demo. The demo will focus on how Dscope serves as a dynamic identity federation provider. Wow, that's a mouthful. Um, so it'll be first ways to connect different client apps, um, whether it's like embedding uh, an authentication flow or redirecting to one. Then we'll go into connecting different IDPs uh, or identity providers. Um, this will be like via tenant configurations, uh, directly via different protocols um, or custom providers. And then we'll, we'll we'll talk about routing in between those two sides, the client applications and the identity pro providers. And the last thing will be a demo of a flow that actually has specific uh, client applications like Zendesk and then different identity providers like Auth0 and Dscope. So in that flow, we'll have some of the concepts that are listed here, whether it's conditional auth based on app IDs that you're using to sign in. We'll be able to merge identities across SAML and OIDC, and then we'll have account recovery um, in case user IDs are lost or something. Um, and, and we'll be doing that in, in somewhat real time. So we can get started. First, what is Dscope? So Dscope is basically an authentication and user management platform um, focused on customer identity. So we have uh, solutions, one major solution is uh, low or no code workflow. So being able to use a kind of uh, drag and drop editor to manage different authentication methods, the logic of how, uh, what follows uh, certain authentication. So having like OTP, the email and then SMS or something, that's something you can all, you can modify with little code. Um, so a pretty neat feature of Dscope. There's, um, I guess, authorization uh, as a service as well. So whether it's RBAC or RBAC um, or ABAC, each of those are, are provided by Dscope, whether it's via APIs, SDKs, even in the Dscope console itself. Essentially, Dscope just gives developers the tools to really uh, create a seamless authentication uh, flow for their applications really easily. Um, and then another really powerful part of it is using third-party connectors. So these are things like uh, uh, reCAPTCHA from uh, Google that allows you to uh, detect bots and uh, ramp up authentication factors if, bot if the risk score is, is high enough. Um, if the user is predicted to be, yeah, a bot, then you can do that. Or segment sending data uh, from your authentication flow straight to your segment uh, account, and then being able to track analytics um, really seamlessly. There's there's a bunch of different connectors you can easily integrate into your uh, into your flow and your application with Dscope. Um, 
and it's as easy as adding like the API key or the right key from segment into a connector configuration and then literally drag and dropping that into your authentication flow uh, to, to be used wherever wherever you want to identify or track users. Segment's just one example, but there's a bunch you can you can see in the dashboard if you navigate there yourself. So cool. So that's hopefully a good foundation for kind of what Dscope is. But one of the really cool aspects of Dscope lies in the, the, the topic we're going to be talking about today, which is dynamic identity federation. So basically the problem is there's a bunch of different, when an application develops, in the beginning you have probably one identity store. You have your application, like your custom web app, and then you have a user store. And that's very simple. You have one source of truth for who your users are. If you want to deactivate someone, you deactivate that one person. If you want to get an idea of like who that person is, all their data is in one place. But as your application develops, you end up having different user stores. Maybe your customers need to learn more about your application and you find that there's an off-the-shelf app that provides learning management. So your customers can log in not only to your app, but they can log into this learning management system. And then lo and behold, they also want support because maybe your application has bugs, hopefully not, but sometimes, uh, or maybe it's the user just can't figure stuff out. Um, basically you'll need support um, potentially. So users might log into a support portal to send open tickets and ask questions, uh, discuss uh, different topics related to your application. So suddenly you have your customer app, which is storing identities. You have your learning management system, which is also storing identities. And then you have your support portal. And you can imagine this just expounds. You have uh, you have end users, you have employees. There's a lot of different potential account portals that you can you can see um, exist in your, your company as a whole, even though the customer that's using each application might be the same, it, it might look like there's, there's different ones. So you end up with these nice is these issues that are listed nicely at the bottom, which are like fragmented customer identities or duplicate accounts between different identity silos, um, really different authentication flows when you actually log into the portal um, or the application. Uh, and then, yeah, really complex uh, SAML or IDC integrations that are manually implemented by your team to, to attempt to, to unify um, the different systems. So this is kind of the problem, which is fundamentally fragmented user identity across a company and, and different applications within it. So to make that a little concrete, that's abstractly the, the issue, which is fragmentation. Specifically, this could look like maybe your, your customer app has its own identity store. It's like Okta or it's like um, maybe it's homegrown, like you store your users in a Postgres database or DynamoDB or something. And then you have like a learning man management system. Maybe it's like Coursera, maybe it's Docebo. And for that, uh, you could be using Docebo's own identity, st identity store or you're using AWS Cognito. Um, and then with Zendesk, maybe you're using uh, Azure or just Zendesk and then other custom apps are using like Firebase or, or other authentication providers. But what you have is like a, a concrete example here of different customer apps and uh, different kind of service third-party apps that you can use that a company would, would probably use and the different identity stores that they have. Um, and this, this, the same problems listed at the bottom. So I guess what's, what's interesting here is we have kind of an example of what dynamic identity federation could do, which is link all the different applications that we just listed with all the different identity providers and then sit in the middle and unify many different we'll call the left side client applications, those different apps, whether it's your own first party or third party, 
and then we have identity providers, which is the right side. And you can basically maintain your existing silos and then have a unified identity that sits kind of in front of all those silos and then behind all the applications. Um, so then you get the benefit of unified identity, even though you have a bunch of identity stores and a bunch of applications. So what this looks like at the bottom, what we're saying is that you can have basically any client applications on the left side. And then all of those will connect to a dynamic identity federation provider or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then that will sit in front of any different IDPs, uh, external, like your product, homegrown, whatever. Um, they'll, they'll kind of be routed to, which is the third point, based on different app IDs. Um, but in the middle with the yeah dynamic identity provider, you can kind of add different user flow journeys or connectors um, as you see, as you need them. So that's the last point, kind of being able to personalize the authentication flow really easily based on what app is coming in, uh, what email users are using, and then really many, many different factors. So this, this kind of illustrates the way of solving the fragmented uh, identity issue by having um, a, a provider sit in the middle. Um, so if we're looking at, to get even more concrete again, uh, use cases for this, basically if you have a bunch of different SAML and OIDC apps, um, if you want to say like in our other example, when you have Zendesk and Docebo, so Zendesk, the support system, Docebo, the learning management system, they're using different protocols for connection, but uh, different identity stores. But what if you want to correlate what they're doing, how active are people on support versus uh, those uh, who use the learning management system um, can help you make decisions around how much to push users towards using a learning management system or, or, or to use support because um, you can have a unified idea of how using those impacts user engagement into your customer app. You can create conditional authentication flows. Uh, so an example of that would be you have like different protocols um, that your service providers use or, or your third-party apps and you have different identity providers so you can route them based on maybe the app that's coming in. Uh, say it's uh, Docebo, you can route to a particular identity provider if Docebo already uses, like in our previous example, um, Amazon Cognito. If it's Zendesk, you can route it to Azure. Um, and then in between, vScope would have a uni unified identity, even though it would be going to different providers. And then I guess the third, if you have like some sort of merger and acquisition uh, happening and you have these different applications, then you'll probably have identity silos because those apps are not developed together. Um, like you would want to potentially unify the identities across the different apps of the companies that are acquired so that like, um, Logging into one wouldn't require completely different credentials for the other. It would be a streamline. It would actually feel like one company's product as opposed to an acquirer and acquiree um, completely separate. So you could reduce the, the the friction of authentication and potentially save a lot of time and and, and money. So these these are some of the use cases. And then last we have a customer story. Uh, so one of Dscope's customers, which is a leading cloud data platform with more than a billion in revenue, uh, tens of more than 50,000 active, monthly active users, yep. um, a lot of customers. Basically, they, they face this issue that we've been talking about, which is fragmented identity, uh, or I guess the first challenge we have listed here is fragmented homegrown authentication because they have the customer app, they have the support, 
to have the uh, learning management system. And each has its own way of logging in, whether it's with uh, like a certain email or, or uh, with email in one or SMS in another or something. Basically, authentication was different uh, on the client app side. And then also the identity provider side had uh, fragmentation in the sense that each um, different app would store identity separately um, at the risk of harping on fragmentation too much. Uh, and then third, <laughs> just a, another way to say uh, the same problem of fragmentation is that it, it invokes like uh, onboarding friction because identity is not shared. Because if you log into one app, you'll have to log in again to another. Whereas you could imagine if you, what if you could log into one app and then the other one you're already logged in because it's it's a platform, right? It's it's not like a separate business where you'd want the identities to be separated. It's it's one company's product. But over time, as you're developing new stuff, sometimes these uh, identity silos can can form. So, kind of what Dscope is doing there is exactly what we talked about in the slides before, which is. You can think of the client applications uh, as the service providers. Uh, I think the common language in OpenID Connect or SAML is service providers and identity providers. So what we'll have is basically Dscope sitting as an identity provider for all the different homegrown authentication services, but then Dscope also acts as a service provider for all the different identity providers that this customer had. So it sits in the middle and routes the client applications to the identity provider um, so that you could have unified identity and then also personalize each of the uh, flows, whether it's adding MFA or whatever, yeah, Disco basically, uh, the, the imp implementation wise, that would be like using like SAML, uh, using OIDC um, to, to integrate each of these applications as service providers. Um, and then doing the same with uh, the different identity providers. So the the third point on the right of how Disco helped is basically um, exactly how uh, a, a, dynamic identity provider should help, which is to centralize identity store um, and share information across different apps, um, even if there are different uh, apps in, in many ways. So that's it for explaining dynamic identity federation. Hopefully that uh, helps you understand. And if it doesn't, then maybe this, this demo will. So we're gonna get into practically if you have Zendesk as your support app and that stores identities in Auth0, right? then you have your own custom app, which is potentially using uh, Dscope or maybe like a homegrown Auth solution, whatever. Um, basically, you have these identity silos. And uh, you can imagine extrapolating this idea across a much larger uh, system or you have another app, uh, yeah, with uh, Okta or something, you have even more custom apps. Um, yeah, you, you can imagine many different uh, examples of client apps and identity providers. And then afterwards, what we'll have is basically all the client applications will flow into one identity provider, which will route to all the different ones. So, well, also uh, one of the benefits of having kind of Dscope in particular sit as the uh, identity uh, dynamic identity provider is being able to easily add things like MFA uh, to Zendesk, uh, add a account recovery to the custom app and then merge the identities, which is, which is the key. So the slide will just tell us that it's time to move. So we'll switch over here. Um, so just for the sake of time, uh, I'll do kind of filled in a little bit, but basically if you're, if you're following along, 
what you'll want to do is you'll go into Zendesk and then you'll basically go to your account and then configure single sign-on. And you can create a new SSO configuration with SAML. So what we're trying to do now, uh, you can kind of pretend that in the past we had Zendesk directly connect to Auth0. And now what we're trying to do is connect Zendesk to Dscope, use Dscope as the IDP. But with Dscope, if, if it's a Zendesk uh, login, then you want to route to Auth0. So then you'll maintain your existing flow, your existing identities, you won't lose it. But you'll be able to have unified identity with the custom app that we have second, um, that, that we'll add in a second. Um, so that's what we're doing now. So basically what you'll do is you'll go into your single sign-on configuration. And then in Dscope, I guess first we should talk about uh, the different ways you connect client apps. So uh, one of the ways is, is a pretty traditional experience of Dscope. It's essentially taking any of these flows um, I guess if you're following along at home, you should create a new project, uh, create, a, create a Dscope account, uh, create a new project here, and then you can follow the getting started wizard and choose what kind of application you have and what auth methods, and then you'll have flows here. So the, the flows basically are what you can embed in your application um, to render a authentication experience like an account portal or something. So what it'll look like is if you have this sort of flow, you can embed this box into your system and then it'll do everything. And then you can customize like the actual styling and whatever in here. Um, so that's one way of connecting client apps is by embedding, in Dscope embedding a authentication flow into your app. So this is probably most useful for custom apps. And then the second would be redirecting. So redirecting, uh, basically, um, Dscope is using SAML or IDC to connect from a third-party app or, or first-party app with Dscope as the IDP. So basically how that works is you'd go to IDP applications, you'd create an application, name it whatever you want. Uh, maybe this one, some LMS. Jibo or something, and then you can even do like you can choose the authentication protocol. So here you have Jibo, and then you could just add the discovery URL into your service provider application, um, and then uh, you would be able to kind of uh, integrate the the two um, systems. So when you log in with your service provider, you can use Dscope's flow, and then this would be the flow that you actually um, go to. Uh, when you're authenticating with Docebo now. Um, so we'll be focused on Zendesk as the first. Um, but these are kind of different ways to connect client apps. If you're trying to connect uh, identity providers, one way is that we'll, we'll delve more deeply into in a second, this is kind of a high level overview first, is to add a custom provider here. So you could even add one like Okta, and then you just go into Okta, get your client ID, your client secrets, um, the authorization endpoints and whatnot, uh, or the OIDC endpoints, and then choose how you'd like to map the different uh, data between your uh, IDP and Dscope, which in this instance would be an SP. Uh, so yeah, that's that's basically one of the ways which you can connect IDPs. Another would be um, if you have tenants configured, uh, if you have tenant-based sign-in, because um, you're a B2B app, uh, those tenants, customers of your business can bring in their own identity providers and uh, kind of, yeah, um, configure that here. So with that, you can do like SAML or IDC. There's also other stuff that you can, you can configure like uh, like password policies or session management uh, capabilities, like when refresh tokens or session tokens expire. But here we're focused on uh, dynamic identity federation. So yeah, that would be configuring SSO uh, for tenant specific use cases. Um, cool. And then, 
basically broadly uh, routing in these scope happens with different conditions. So you can have like the one we'll be using later is if it's like um, Docibo or something, then you could add a SSO app ID and check if it equals. So if is Docibo, that equals a certain value and this value you could get from uh, the IDP apps. So for us, Docibo, we take this app ID um, and then we would put it into the condition that we just had earlier. Then you can route to certain screens that you can create. So you can literally have like, uh, yeah, whatever authentication you want after that. Or you can even use a, what we'll see with, with Zendesk, what we'll do is we'll do OAuth um, with a custom provider that's a zero. Uh, but yeah, basically routing can happen like that. Routing can also happen with like a email domain. So a user would basically in, in, input like, sign up with like an email and then you could route based on that email. Maybe you check if it's a work email or something. Uh, and then there's like, uh, of course, tenant specific routing that you could do. You could um, use SSO and then based on the email domain that you configured in the tenant, then you can route to the tenant's uh, IDP. So this is broadly how in Dscope you configure the left side of Dynamic Identity Federation, which is client apps, and then the right side, which is identity providers. And then how you can route between the two uh, and ultimately your users would end up being here. I'll delete this one for now. Uh, but basically you'll have unified identity across the different providers that you have. So uh, running short on time, so we're shooting a finish presentation in, in the next five or 10 minutes, and then open up for questions at the end or feel free to send questions in the chat too um, in the meantime. But so I'll just quickly go through this. Basically setting up Zendesk, we got started, but you you would go into the Dscope console creates an application. Uh, in this instance, Zendesk supports SAML, so we're using SAML. Uh, this will be automatically populated by Dscope. This is basically the hosted flow. Uh, you can you can kind of see your project ideas here. This is a hosted flow domain. And then the particular flow that's running, which you can identify here with different IDs, uh, is is linked. So if you want to customize the flow that's running, you can easily change that value. And then this is the uh, information that you'll need to put into your service provider application in, in this instance Zendesk. So what we've done is created a new single sign-on configuration in Zendesk called Disco. And um, name it whatever you want. Uh, in this instance, uh, Dscope is the IDP or we could call auth0 or something if like, because in this instance, we'll be routing from Zendesk to auth0, so, but whatever. Then you'll take your SSO URL and then put it in here. And then for the certificate uh, fingerprint, um, basically you'll be able to download the certificate and then parse that for the fingerprint. Soon we'll have the ability to copy it directly. Um, and then this is just customizing the actual button that you see. And then in the Dscope side, so that that would be connecting the service provider. So now the service provider knows where to redirect the Dscope. And then now with Dscope, you have to uh, enter some service provider uh, information. So this that just gives you here. Um, basically, you can copy over the uh, ACS URL into Dscope. And then the entity ID is just the first portion of that domain. And then you could, you can customize a SAML assertion subject type to be email and then decide how you want to map the um, Dscope user attributes to uh, your service provider here. So Dscope your users will have a, a variety of different attributes. Um, but in this case, we'll be using uh, email primarily and then family and given name. So this is uh, kind of the, the Zendesk requirement for the uh, user value on the right. So, so yeah, that's the Zendesk half of things. Uh, 
configured. So what you'll see, this is me navigating to my Zendesk account site. Um, and then we're not authenticated because this is this is my browser, and then this is a this is a different this is Chrome where I'm not authenticated. And then basically once we continue with DScope, it should bring us to the sign up or info here. So that's what's happening. You see it's going there. Um, basically, uh, what it's doing is, I guess if you're, if you're following along at home and want to configure it, uh, basically you'll have the SSO app ID uh, that you copy from your IDP apps as we showed earlier, right here. And then you'll have a condition and check if it's Zendesk, right? And this is the app ID, then you can do sign up burn with OAuth. So that's why it's redirecting to OAuth zero is because now we'll, we'll quickly configure the second half, which is adding a custom provider that's not like Google or something. Um, so basically how that works is you'll just go to authentication methods, you'll add social login and now you'll add a, you'll create a custom provider. Um, in this instance, it'll be auth zero because your identities are already there. Uh, basically in auth zero, you'll go into applications, you'll create an application, and then you'll take the domain and the client ID, um, or sorry, the, 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 yeah, the client ID and the client secret, and you'll put them into your custom provider configuration. Then you, this is actually required is the different scopes, um, whether it's open ID, email, or profile, the grant type. Uh, so these are your auth zero kind of uh, auth zero IDC endpoints. Um, so yeah, so basically, uh, Yeah, basically in the Auth0 docs, you'll be able to find the different endpoints that you can use, but you just add your uh, project domain here, um, which you have, which is this one. And then you append like slash authorize, slash, uh, slash token and slash user info. And these are the different OIDC endpoints that you'd be using in, um, to use Auth0 as, a, uh, as your uh, social login provider essentially. And then what attributes do we want to map? Um, basically, we can take these, the user ID generated in um, a zero and use that as the login ID in DScope. So this is taking the auth zero information and mapping it to a DScope user. Uh, so that's like the user ID, it's like the name from auth zero, and then that's the uh, email. And then a key thing is actually having email verified because if you don't have a verified email, then users won't merge because you basically don't know if the user is actually like, uh, has a trustworthy uh, identifier. So you, you'll have two separate users in that, in that case. So you need to make sure that email verified is an attribute. Then when you have other users created in other ways, and they have the same verified email, then they'll be matched, uh, they'll be merged into one, one uh, identity. So that's auth zero. So then what you would do is you would just go into your flow and add a action. And that action would be sign up for an OAuth. And um, you could basically um, choose a auth zero as your provider. And that's what we have here is that if it's Zendesk coming in, right, then we'll just go to Auth0. Um, and then after that, this is us adding account uh, recovery, basically. So you just have a check for if the user has a uh, phone. Um, we can even use like user phone. Uh, it's not empty. Then we can uh, do a sign up in with a OTP and SMS to to add a phone, um, so you can recover your account later. 
So that's that's one path. Um, so now to test that, let me just click over here. You'll see it redirected. If you look, notice the URL, it redirected to our hosted flow, and then that hosted flow directly redirected to auth zero. Um, and we can actually look at our users right here, and we don't have any yet. And then uh, we just authenticated with social login. I was already I was logged in already. That's why it redirected immediately. Um, but basically now we can add a phone um, instead of zero. So then, boom. And now we're redirected to uh, Zendesk and we're logged in. And actually we can even uh, have some Zendesk inception. Uh, and you can see our uh, single sign-on configuration after using the Dscope flow to log in. And now the Dscope user is here. All right, you can say it's Auth0, and they use Google OAuth. So this is the sub from Auth0 that's being appended to the social provider, which is Auth0. Uh, and then the verified email here and the verified phone. So yeah, so that's basically uh, configuring the first half of things. Um, here, uh, the Zendesk to Auth0 connection. And then the custom app, uh, code-wise, let me bring up the code. Basically here, we'll be using um, uh, NextAuth, which is, uh, we'll have a Next.js application, and it's using NextAuth, which uses OIDC, to connect to Dscope. And then with Dscope, We'll, we'll, we'll simply use it as the identity provider, but we'll use the same authentication flow that we just had for uh, for Zendesk. So here, what we have, I have it running locally already, is this custom app. So to configure this, you can uh, basically clone our Next.js hackathon template, and that already has our uh, next uh, configuration configured. <laughs> configuration configured. And then you can add like, uh, I'll have to clean that up later, like comment on secrets, but basically add your project IDs and stuff um, there and you have this running. And in Dscope, you'll take your project ID here and also you'll have to create a uh, management key. Uh, to use in your to use with next auth in your next.js application and then it'll use the default oidc flow here so it'll redirect us to the same flow so for instance if we mess this up if we like did sign up or i um then just uh, make this up then when we go here and get started It'll redirect us to sign up or I, which is non existent because we don't have a flow called sign up or I. Um, so we'll call it sign up or in. Okay. Uh, and then now, if we get started, it'll redirect us to the sign up or in flow. And the way that was configured is, is essentially um, if it's not Zendesk, then we'll go to this welcome screen where you can do email or social login. And then um, if it's a new user, it'll have you do stuff. And if you don't have a phone, it'll have you do stuff. Um, so with, with Zendesk, we're basically adding MFA. Here we can add a account recovery, or I guess they serve synonymous purposes. But yeah, essentially you can see here it's using OIDC with Dscope. It redirects to a hosted player. You can have it hosted yourself. And then we uh, sign in with OAuth again, but now it's directly via Dscope. And we're logged in to our custom app. And we can see a merged user and the login ID has been appended. And this is directly using Google with uh, Dscope. So that's why it's the, the Google sub that's appearing. But you see how it's a merged user. If we hadn't verified the email, we'd actually see two different users here. We would see uh, one with a verified email for the social login that we just did, and then one from Auth0 without verified email, so two different identities, which we don't want. So this is good that it's a unified identity. 
And then that's about it. So basically, uh, so yeah, that, that's basically it. Actually, I think if we refresh here. Yeah, it shows dashboard. So basically we can go to uh, the hacker dashboard um, and then sign on if we want. So, so that's uh, basically it. Um, we configure Zendesk uh, and a custom app to use Dscope as a dynamic identity federation provider um, and that used uh, SAML for Zendesk or IDC for the custom app. And then you maintained Auth0 as the identity provider. And we used, we had phone-based MFA and account recovery. So we've, we've successfully hit all these points. Um, so the, the last thing is, uh, for questions is, uh, yeah, if you want to sign up for an account, you can go to dscope.com slash sign up. Uh, you can watch another identity federation demo, um, kind of get a different perspective on, on what it means. And then check out our press release on identity federation broker or join our community on Slack. So if you have any further questions that you don't ask here, feel free to, to hit us up on Slack. Um, we're always welcoming of, of any, any comments, questions, or concerns. With that, getting into questions. So let's see. Great presentation. <laughs> Thanks, I'll we'll count that answer at five. Um, so this one asks, uh, how flexible is it to use SSO with OIDC or SAML on the flow? How does the attributes map mapping work from the external IDPs connected to DScope and how's the information passed back to the apps that's SPs controlled? Yeah, basically you can, easily kind of map, uh, as we touched on this briefly, basically being able to map different uh, attributes between IDPs and SPs. And, and the same exists for uh, mapping of uh, information for tenant-based SSO. Um, you can map between the SP and the IDP of, of particular tenants. So it can overwrite and it can sync, you have things like skim that you can, you can push uh, changes from your IDP into your uh, into the SP, which in this case could be Dscope. Um, you can, yeah, yeah, I think that about covers that. Um, is there a way I can associate custom providers with specific tenants as well? Um, because just being a project besides uh, just being a project level uh, custom provider. Yeah, basically that's what's happening here is uh, is kind of the, the, the second way of connecting uh, identity providers is through tenants. And the cool thing, I guess here is that you can easily add a screen, um, maybe another welcome screen. Let's go and sign in, uh, H2. And then we actually have an SSO button. So we can sign in with SSO. Uh, you can put your email. Uh, yeah. So then we can actually do the SSO action. So now, and we actually, you can look at it yourself later, but we have a bunch of different SSO. Uh, related like uh, actions uh, you can do like we also I'll show sample config in a, in a second just to wrap up this question but basically yeah after you configure tenant based SSO and a user uses a domain associated with that tenant it'll automatically uh, you can configure it to automatically uh, conduct SSO uh, via SAML or IDC um, with whatever identity provider that the user configured. And the way they configure it is, uh, one way is using our SAML config flow, which can also be embedded where they enter a company domain 
and then they can choose the IDP, and then there's like a step-by-step -step flow that uh, the scope takes the user through to configure SSO for their tenant with your application. So they can talk to Google, Azure, Jump Cloud, Ping, Ping, or it's not one of those, SAML. So yeah, that's uh, associating custom identity providers with specific tenants um, outside of the, uh, the, the one we configured being project level. Uh, how is uh, role information passed back to the app from Dscope as an OIDC provider? Um, can I use the user in Dscope as the main identity and control permissions at the Dscope level, passing them back? Can I use the user information in Dscope as the main identity and control permission at the Dscope level, passing them back to my app? Yeah, so basically um, how this works is you can essentially, essentially all this configuration happens in uh, similar places, but uh, I guess scopes uh, you can configure, um, you can configure a dscope.claimscope uh, that dscope returns uh, in your uh, SP app, and the scope will include the different uh, kind of similar to the scopes here. You could you could do like a scope claims in your SP, um, and then that would uh, that's how you could basically access the uh, authorization information in your service provider, um, and and pass it back to your app. So I think that was the last question. So we're running a little over time. So um, since there seems to be nothing else, uh, thanks so much to everyone for listening and joining in today. Mentioned all the resources. Yeah, please check them out and, and sign up or uh, come chat with us whenever you want. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, hope y'all learned something and uh, have a good good one. Yeah. All right.